Hey everyone, if you were watching this week's Q&A, you would have noticed that we, we postponed answering some of the questions. And mm. uh, we did that because we wanted to spend a little bit more time grappling with it. Uh, and the thing that we're talking about grappling with is God's love. Uh, and so, so particularly in that passage where we, we see God loving the world, mm. uh, so John 3.16, um, the, the notion of, well, how does God's love work? If he loves the whole world, um, does that mean there's not a, an elect few that he loves? Is it, does he not uh, just love Christians? Does he love everyone? And if he loves everyone, why isn't everyone saved? There's, there's lots of stuff to, to dig into around that. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be trying to answer. How does God's love work? Um, and what do we do with it? Um, and so, Liam, you're going to kind of talk us through it. I've given you the responsibility since you've been wrestling with it already. Yeah, um, but, but not, not in massive detail. Um, so we're actually going to work through a, an article. You'll, you'll, there'll be the link to this article uh, right next to wherever you find this video. This article is a summary of a, a longer article written by Don Carson, which is a summary of his book, um, The Difficult Doctrine of the Love of God. Okay, so it's a summary of an article, which is summarising another article of a summarising a book. Yep. So just get your expert. So, so what we're trying to do now is we're not trying to give all the answers. We're not trying to run through everything. We just want to give you the landscape, okay. <coughs> and then so um, the really simple version, but with the resource yep. to go dig in much deeper if you want yep. to. And if, if you haven't heard of Don Carson, a uh, great guy, really trusted biblical uh, teacher and exegete, probably I'd say the, the most trusted evangelical Bible teacher of this generation, I would say, at least within mm. our evangelical circles. He's certainly, I know for, for Liam and I both as we prepare things, he's a resource that we lean on heavily. Mm. Yeah, he's really helpful. So so this is this is an article he's put together trying to trying to answer that question of, what what does it mean when 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 we read that God loves the world? But but elsewhere, uh, it seems that he he has different sorts of love for different sorts of people. And how can that be? All that, all those sort mm, of things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So the questions that kind of came through question time. Well, what what does it mean when it says world that God mm. loves the world? One of the questions I didn't read out uh, that I delayed to hear was, does God love Esau? So. Uh, He's that, kind of the, the non-chosen brother, uh, if you yeah, look yeah. into that in the Bible. So, and, and just to give you a bit of framework around that question, so Malachi 1, 2 and 3, um, we've got a quote from God that says, I have loved Jacob, but Esau I hated. Mm. So you've got, a, you've got a phrase like that that seems to say, and they're, they're two brothers, Jacob was the chosen brother, Esau was the brother who actually missed out on the promise, that's a big summary. Um, Oh, hang on, how, how can God love someone and hate the other? But then John 3, 16, God loves the world. He loves, so which one's yeah, right? Yeah. Which verse do we need to cut out of the Bible? Can become the question if we're not careful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, what do you so, got? That's framing us. So what have I got? I've got a summary of a summary of an article from Don, but we'll, we'll work through it pretty quickly. But the, the short answer is that, that God's love, oper like our love, operates in different ways uh, to different people at different times. Okay. Um, so j just, just like human relationships, the way I love uh, my friends, like you, uh, is very different to the way I love my children or my wife. As I would hope. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Or my sheep or my coffee. Yeah, we, we understand that. So in the pyramid of those loves... I'm not going to try and place you. Okay, good. That's good. all right. Um, but but yeah, on top. We, <laughs> but we do get that we love different things and different people in different ways at different times. Yeah, and yeah. we can still use that same word. It's not we're not being disingenuous. We're not being uh, we're not lying when we say one second. Oh, I love my new car. Next sec second, oh, I really love you, Lucy. It's yeah, yeah. Um, and the Bible works same the word, different same meaning, word, and different meanings. Okay. And the and the Bible works the same way. Um, so we'll w work through just a few different ways that God loves different people uh, really quickly. And again, full versions in the article. Yep. So first one is God's intra-Trinitarian love. Try to say that one quickly. Glad you were saying that, not me. So it's the love within the Trinity. Uh, so God, one God, three persons have existed in, a, in their triune uh, personhood uh, mm. forever, for eternity. They've been in relationship forever. 
And there's a huge emphasis on the love between the Father and the Son, especially uh, through the Gospels, because you, you actually see that relationship playing out. Yeah, Jesus yeah. is talking to his Father. He's obeying his Father because of the love. The Father loves the Son. So this huge commitment and vast, unchangeable, I- intense love within the Trinity. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's our, our, our first, I guess, sort of love. Yep, okay, um, good. Second sort of love is God's providential love over his creation. So that word providence, it, it's the, the normal aspects of life that we would, we would see as oh, just, just life, but actually it's God. Um, mm. So probably the most famous one is uh, where, where Paul's uh, preaching somewhere, trying to convert some people, uh, speaking to people who've had no Jewish experience, and he tells them about this God, and he introduces God as the God who sends the rain on the just and the unjust alike. So that's yeah, how he introduces yeah, God yeah. to them. And it, so that's providence. That's, so we, it rains, we go, well, we know that's because of the weather patterns. Well, actually, it's God who sets the weather patterns. Yeah, yeah. So in those ones, we don't typically see the word love. No. But we see it expressed in, in the, something like what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. So, so God is a, is a provider, providence. A provider, that sort of providing love to the whole of creation. Oxygen we can breathe, food we can eat, yeah, uh, yeah. life, breath, everything. Uh, and so that's, a, that, that's love, and it's a love to everyone. It's a general, generic love, very different to the love within the Trinity already, you can see. Mm. Um, yep, good. Third one uh, is, is God's third sort of love that God has, is his redeeming stance or attitude towards his fallen world. Um, so that's the sort of love we're seeing described here in John 3.16. So God's saving or redeeming attitude towards this fallen world. Um, so again, and we said that in question time, world there is really talking about the whole of humanity. And, and through John we see it especially emphasised there is the badness of the world. So mm. it's not uh, his love towards a good world or a, a lovely or lovable world. No, it's, it's his his stance of salvation, his love that says, I want to save you towards the whole world. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a third as- aspect of love. And I guess you'd say it's a step up from his providential love to yeah, the whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so definitely kind of a step in line with, say, in 1 Peter, where you know, God is not slow in keeping his promises, uh, mm. the patient wanting everyone to be saved. That that's yeah, fits yeah, into that, that category. Yeah, it's this, it's this he, he has this general love for the world that, that drives him to offer his son to the to the whole world, mm. um, which is yeah, so pretty distinct there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the, the th- third one. Uh, the fourth would be is, and this is where you're going to get some discussions happening. Uh, God's particular, effective selecting or choosing love towards his elect people. Um, now, throughout the Bible, we we read of this word called predestination. Uh, and it's actually a word we find in the Bible. So if you say, oh, I don't believe in predestination, well, it's right here. Um, and it's this, this very clear biblical teaching uh, that God chooses uh, or, or, or ordains or elects uh, who will be his. Uh, and now to be really clear, he does not do that on the basis of what he knows they will choose. So that's one yeah, explanation yeah, so for it. It's not a foreknowledge. No, it's it, a well, the, he does have foreknowledge, but we have passages where God's foreknowledge, that word, and predestining his election are in the same verse. Yeah, they're, so they're, they're separate They're given, they're things. separate things. Yeah. So he does know what is going to happen because he's God. But he all, it's not that God has, like, he's not a uh, seer where he can see the future. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard it explained I- incorrectly mm. that oh, he just sees who will become a Christian and so that's what predestination is. Yeah. But it's not, it's not a, he, his choosing isn't based on what we'll decide, but, but it, it's the thing that allows us to decide. Absolutely. So, yeah. And that's one of the things which makes God God. So uh, God, who can only see the future not control the future, well, that's not, mm. not really much of a God. No, he's, he's, that's what this word sovereign yeah, means, yeah. this all-powerfulness. Um, so, so God does have a particular saving love towards his elect, uh, and his elect are the people who will be his forever, yeah. who, he, who he chooses, who he, who he sends his, his spirit to in a special way. And we, we've even seen this in John, that our, our hearts are so dark and sick that we are unable to truly see Jesus unless the Spirit does something in us. 
yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which I find a bit humbling, um, but also encouraging. So I, I'm no better than anyone. I needed, I needed God to open my heart. Um, to yeah, allow me to yeah. see because I couldn't do that on my own. Now, there's a lot there. So, so this predestination election idea is a, a big one mm. and I sense that maybe we're going to have to do another video on that. Uh, uh, but we don't yeah. want to get off track. So if that's something you want to hear more about, please do let us know. Um, but so that, that's a type of love as well. Yeah, and, and you'll see that reference, that Malachi passage, uh, Malachi uh, 1, 2, 3, that, that sort of emphasises his choosing love of Jacob uh, if you want to go to another passage to read that, uh, Ephesians 5.25, talking about Christ loving the church in a different way than he loves the whole world. So there's this, these people that he's chosen and saved to himself. So it's, it's a different sort of love, mm -hmm. different to what we see in, here in John 3.16. Um, so that's the fourth way. The, um, the fifth way, and this might be a little bit surprising to you, fifth sort of God's love is God's love for his people, which is conditional on obedience. Mm. Um, so and this is where I think we see some of the real, uh, un, really unhelpful things uh, that Christians can say about God's love. Uh, things like, you know, uh, God loves us unconditionally. And you're like, well, yes and no. It's, it's not as simple as that. Or things like God, God uh, you know, hates the sin but loves the sinner. Uh, hang on, that's, that, that's not really the way it works. It's not the whole picture of the Bible. Yeah, um, so it's an example of, of one where we, we see both expressed. Mm. Uh, so it, it's unconditional in the sense that Jesus dies for us on no merit of our own. Um, yeah. But there's another type of love that is conditional. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so so uh, it's our merit didn't bring Jesus to die for us. Uh, our goodness did not. It wasn't our goodness or how good we might be in the future that God made God choose us. So that mm -hmm. love is absolutely not conditional. Yep. But there is a sort of love from God that is, is thoroughly conditional. A um, couple of passages to go to. Um, one, uh, John fifteen nine, where Jesus says, keep uh, or remain in my love. And you think, okay, that's, that's indicating that you can do something to stay in or not stay in God's love. Um, and in John fifteen 10, I'll read this one out. Jesus, uh, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my commands and my father's commands and remain his, his love. So that's a, that's a conditional statement. If, then, that's a, that's a conditional clause. Mm. If you obey my commands, then you will remain in my love. So it's, it's very, very conditional there. So it's, it's saying, you, and, and it's really giving a description of what, this, what real love for God looks like. Mm. Real love for God doesn't look like going, oh yeah, whatever, I'll take your salvation. Now I'm going to ignore you and just do what I want. Yeah, um, yeah. So, because we we take we've got that conditional love, but we've got to hold it up with with grace and, and that yeah, kind of love. Yeah. And how does that work together? And yeah, and, so and it's probably a good moment then. To, so, how do we juggle all these different kinds of love? How do we deal with that? Yeah. So, and that's so. So, for, I guess the first positive I want to say is just remember, absolutely remember that. God's love's dynamic uh, in the way it, he, he relates to different people at different times. Mm. Um, so don't, um, so, so just remember there are, so we're reading the Bible that there's, a, there's different ways that God loves. So don't march in saying, I know what this means. So please be humble. Keep your, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open. As, as we, so that's a, that's a positive thing. Mm. But I guess um, a couple of warnings that Don Carson pulls up for us that I want to reinforce here. And that's, that's the opposite of what I just said. Um, he says, uh, first one, we must avoid absolutizing or making absolute one biblical expression of God's love. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's, so that's a, a couple of ways that might look. It might look to say, oh, well, I'm going to take John 3.16 because that's the famous one. God so loved the world that he goes, okay, God loves the whole world. Therefore, everyone must have this. So there can't be any electing love there can't be any providential love there can't be any choosing one not choosing no no because yeah, god loves yeah. the whole world so don't take one expression of god's love and make it the only expression yeah. of god's love and that would be sad isn't it? there's a richness to the this yeah. different types of love we wouldn't want to lose that um yeah absolutely but and now this is and, and this the, this next little warning i think we equally dangerous is we've got to be kept be beware of compartmentalizing these different loves. So uh, seeing God as behaving like this here and like this here, or here, his, 
he's loving and hating Jacob and Esau, and here he's loving the whole world, and here he's selectively, electively loving his elect. Uh, so not sort of like, oh, we can change the filter on the camera. Oh, we're now in red love, we're now in green love, we're now in yellow love. Mm. No, no, it, God, God is operating with everyone all at once. He's, a, he's, he's not a robot or a machine or a filter you can put over the, the lens. Uh, he's always acting towards his creation. He's always acting towards his elect. He's always acting towards the whole world. Um, so he's, mm. he's complex, I guess we want to say. So don't, uh, in one sense, yeah, don't say this is the only sort of love and it's static, but also don't draw such firm lines between um, each of God's love that you say, oh, well, here God is only acting in this sort of love and here God is only yeah, acting in that sort they, of love. They exist together. Yeah, because yeah. God's a, a person, not a, not a filter. Yeah, over, yeah. A, over a light. Okay. Um, and, and I think, and the, the last one uh, is we much, we really need to weigh, uh, so consider the well-worn evangelical cliches against mm. scripture. Um, and this, this is something I, I, I think it's, it's really easy to do. We fall into it so easily is to things we've grown up hearing or we've heard often, uh, a cliche, we, we actually allow that to dominate our thinking on a particular topic. Yeah, so do you have an example of one of those cliches? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, I mentioned them before. Uh, God loves everyone in the same way, or God loves us unconditionally, um, or you can't do anything. So this is one I've, I've heard. You, you can't do anything to make God love you any more or any less, mm. um, which in some particular situations, with, with careful explanation about what that means... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah, yeah. So, so, but then when there there is that example of conditional love and and the obedience that goes with it. But you're chanting, so you're that, chanting your cliche wholesale. You you actually yeah. lose something of what God wants us to know. Um, and, and really, the big one is we always must let the Bible be our determining factor. So not cliches. Sorry, not cliches. Not surprisingly, not cliches. Mm. But we don't think of them as cliches. We think of them as, because we, we, we're not naive like that, uh, but we, we don't think of that. We think of them as truths that we know that are mm. from the Bible and they might even have a, a verse attached to them. Yeah, because uh, yeah, they a, are true in Yeah, they are, but, yeah. but we call that a proof text, you know, pulling out one verse that will prove that this statement is right. Now we've got to remember, this, this is a big book. It's God's dynamic and the way he relates to us. It's in a relationship. It's not static in one particular situation. So be careful, go slow, and let, let's weigh these things we think we know, especially a slogan that you would then go and apply. So anything mm. that you say, well, I know that can't be true because of this thing I know, if, if your mind ever goes there, let's, let's have our warning lights going off. You know, I came out when you were preaching a few weeks ago on the uh, Jesus miracle at Cana. You know, oh, well, we, we know that God doesn't want us to get drunk or to drink wine ever. So this can't be wine. No, no, anything that starts with, oh, I know that, mm. Mm, just, let's, just let's go steady. Make sure. Yeah, make sure. it might be true, but we need to weigh it carefully against Scripture. Yeah, that's really helpful. So uh, hopefully that's helped you wrap your head around that that topic of God's love a little bit better. Mm. Uh, and as always, we'd love to keep chatting with you. So more questions, send them through, uh, be in touch. Uh, and, and perhaps if there's other things that you want us want to hear from us on, send those through as well. We, we'd love to keep sharing and keep thinking together. Mm. Absolutely. But for now, uh, good night, good day, good morning, whenever you're watching. <laughs>